Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with skin, hair, and nail ailments, starting with the letter A. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've bro broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address issues of the skin, nails and hair, then eyes, ears, nose, then ailments of the teeth and gums, lungs and respiration, ailments of the heart, blood and circulation, ailments of muscles, bones and joints, then ailments of the esophagus, stomach and duodenum, and small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and then ailments of the kidney and bladder then ailments specific to women and specific to men, and then issues of the hormone and metabolism. After that, I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations in the immune system. Then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems. The homeopathic remedies that address homeopathic uh, special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk, for example, of phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases in which they suffer. As an example, example natrium muir people tend to be pear-shaped have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual. And so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. And account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and the general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So let's continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with skin, hair, and nail ailments. Today we'll continue with skin, hair, and nail ailments that begin with the letter A. Abscess. We'll start with abscess. An abscess is often the result of a puncture wound, using unsterilized needles, animal bites, and things of this nature. What happens is that these puncture wounds effectively seal bacteria inside the skin. These bacteria multiply, producing toxins that cause heat, swelling, and pain. To prevent toxins from entering the bloodstream, the surrounding tissue walls off the infected area, which becomes filled with pus, which is a mixture of defending white blood cells, dead bacteria, and blood serum. 
Eventually the abscess bursts and pus drains out or surrounding tissue gradually digests and disposes of the abscess's contents. Occasionally, however, an abscess becomes chronic. In this case, the infection continues to smolder because the body is unable to deal with it. When given early enough, homeopathic remedies or antibiotics can prevent abscess formation. If this early stage is not addressed, then later surgical incisions may be necessary to drain the pus. Specific remedies to be given every hour for up to 10 doses. For a slow forming abscess that is located fairly deep with swelling of the surrounding lymph glands, or for a chronic abscess that neither goes away nor comes to a head, to aid healing after the abscess has been incised and cleaned, use Silicea 6C. For a pus-filled abscess that is tender to the slightest touch and causes sharp stabbing pain, chilliness and irritability, use Hepar Sulf 6C. For an abscess in the early stage, especially if the perspiration is smelly and the person cannot tolerate heat or cold, use Mercurius 6C. For an abscess in the early stage that is angry, throbbing, tender, and very sensitive to cold air, use Belladonna 30C. Some self-help now. Some self-help now. Hot compresses may help to bring an abscess to a head and then encourage discharge of the pus. Once the abscess is open, bathe the area with Hypericum and Calendula lotion. Five drops of each in a half pint of boiled and then cooled water. Acne. Acne is mainly an affliction of adolescence, but it can persist into middle age in some people. In adults, this condition requires constitutional homeopathic treatment and a careful watch on the diet with extra vitamins and mineral supplementation and changes in hygienic routines and lifestyle. Acne rosea. rosea. Acne rosea produces acne-like symptoms but occurs in middle age. With this condition, the cheeks and nose flush easily and become permanently red with small pus-filled pimples. This condition is usually aggravated by hot spicy foods, tea, coffee, and alcohol, and by stress. Other causes of this condition are oral contraceptives, steroid ointments, and possibly a deficiency of vitamin B2, riboflavin. If stress is the major factor, homeopathic treatment is constitutional. Specific remedies to be taken three times daily for up to three weeks. If the face is dry and burning and cold applications only make things worse this, and the skin flakes and scales and the person is restless and chilly, use Arsenicum 6C. In the early stages where the face is red, dry and burning hot, use Belladonna 6C. If the face is always red and dry with pimples and pus filled pimples, use Sulfur Iodine. 6C. If the face is burning and itching and is aggravated by heat, especially in women with scanty periods, use Sanguinaria 6C. If the condition is made worse by alcohol, tea, and coffee, and the person is constipated, irritable, and chilly, use Nux 6C. If there are red, painful, and itchy spots, and the face is puffy and swollen, and cold or wet weather makes the condition worse, use Rust Tox 6C. If the condition is markedly worse in the morning and aggravated by alcohol, and the face is reddish, purple, and mottled, use Lachesis 6C. Some self-help. Take extra vitamin B2. If you're on steroids, stop taking them if at all possible. Athlete's Foot. Athlete's foot is a fungal infection in which skin around the toes becomes red and itchy, then white and soggy and flakes or peels off. In severe cases, toenails become yellow and dis distorted. Jock itch has similar symptoms in the groin area, and ringworm also falls into this category, 
characterized by a red, itchy rash on the scalp. These ailments are all caused by the same fungus, which likes warmth and moisture that is often found in swimming pools and changing rooms. The homeopathic approach to these ailments is to boost the immune system generally, so treatment is constitutional. Self-help. Wash your feet regularly and dry them thoroughly. A hair dryer is good for drying between toes. Let as much air get to your feet as possible. If you must wear socks, wear cotton rather than nylon, and if you must wear shoes, wear sandals. Over-the-counter antifungal powders should only be used if the, if the condition is very persistent. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.